Hello, it's Tone. Um, so I'm sitting here with a friend and we're just having some conversations and she came up with some questions and we thought we should record these questions and these answers that I have. Um, because this uh, 2019 has been a pretty uh, fabulous, fascinating year. Even with these uh, challenges, um, we still got some great blessings that, you know, took place in it. So... Here's some questions um, that was given to me um, to answer. So I'm going to answer those questions. Uh, the first question is to me, and I'm reading off this monitor of her questions. Um, the first question asked to me was, um, tell about some of the projects that you were able to uh, produce this year. And uh, this year I was a in 2019 for this year. I was actually able to film two projects, um, a feature film called Kitchen Talk, which debuted um, on December the 25th, uh, released to be uh, streaming on Amazon. And uh, then we did a free streaming on uh, Facebook. The other project is Gavin Hook, which is going to be released to stream early spring. No exact date. Um, given as of yet, but that is what's the next, the two projects that I was able to get done in 2019. And then we were able to sell three scripts that I've written. Um, I can't give the title of the scripts because I sold them and the titles most likely will be changed. And uh, the filmmaker and director that purchased them um, they're going to do whatever they're going to do with those and rewrite those scripts uh, out to be their own, basically. Um, selling your script is kind of like um, when you write a movie, I'm sorry, when you write music for artists and then they perform it. And But the script works a little bit different. You sell that script to the uh, filmmaker, director, or the network that was going to host that project and your name's off of it. You release it, you give it to them, they do what doctoring they want to do to it. They f film it, put it out as their own. So this is one of the well, first things I learned in this industry going to this next level. And that is, you can't let yourself be attached to the project, um, especially if you want to try to sell it to make some money off of it. Because sometimes your name can't be on it, but the money can be paid on it. <laughs> So that's a big thing I've learned over the last couple of years uh, working in this film industry. You know, there's different, there's multiple ways to make money. You know, you can um, sell your projects like your script, sell your movie like your your finished movie uh, to a network or to executives, and then they can do what they're going to do with it. If you're going to sell them, make sure that you're not attached to them. So my rule for myself is if it's a film that I don't see myself actually filming, I put it up for sale, let them purchase it. I'm not so attached. But if it's a project script that I've written and it's, and it feels personal to me, then I hold on to those and then I will film them myself. Um, the other question was asked, tell me some of the actors. Tell me, tell me some of the actors you work with and share what the experience was working with them and what you liked about working with those actors. Okay. Wow. This can be a long process. <laughs> I've worked with so many amazing actors. Um, so let's see. I will start with my film, uh, kitchen talk. That, that was kind of a last minute project. It wasn't really a plan project. It's just I was talking with my mom and she was talking about different things and she just gave me ideals just from the conversation. And so I just started writing and then I wanted it to be something different than I've done because I'm, I'm so, I'm a dramatic writer. I love drama, but I figured, well, if I can make drama and put a little bit of uh, comedy with it, that would be a great accomplishment for me. So what I did is I I went and reached out to some of the actors that I have worked with on previous projects. And I 
selected them and wrote the script script towards their personalities to how I have worked with them in the past and how I knew they would deliver it, even if it wasn't a character they connected to in a way that um, makes it them. But they can really deliver it to give me what I wanted from it. And uh, so I'll start with one of my uh, favorite actors to work, actors, actresses that I really love working with. And that is uh, Keisha Rose. Um, Keisha Rose contacted me like maybe about six years ago when we did a, a short film called The Exchange. And uh, throughout that, we managed to kind of keep an ongoing friendship relationship in the industry and, and a little bit on the personal level as well. She's been someone I've been able to kind of call and just kind of ch chatty chat chat with. <laughs> but anyway, um, I called on Keisha to play this character named Paige in Kitchen Talk um, because I knew that she had such diversity to her personality and I knew she would allow me to kind of direct her in the direction I wanted to go. And she put that nice little twain together um, in that uh, character she played played as Paige. And uh, what I like about Keisha as an actress is um, she has a strength in her body language, the way she communicates when she performs her character. Um, the other thing I love about Keisha is her work ethics. Um, she is a 100% giver to the character and trying to deliver not only the lines, but trying to give some feeling and authenticity to that character. Um, then um, we have, um, let's see, who else I love? Um, uh, well, I have several newcomers, to be honest. I have Rod uh, Godfrey. I have Brenda Smith DeBone. And I have Nakia Wiggins. And then I have Jackie Harrington the Third. Those are four new characters that I actually, uh, actors, I'm sorry, that I worked with on Kitchen Talk. And to kind of give you a general idea on each one, and I'll start with Jackie Harrington. Um, Jackie Harrington the Third, he played Logan. And what I like about him was, um, he, he was pretty flexible with his acting. Um, you could tell at times the character itself was a little uncomfortable for him, but he delivered in that character by giving heart to it. And that's what I love about him as an actor. Um, he really loves it to the point of you can feel his heart uh, beating through the performance of the character he plays. Uh, then there's Nakia. Nakia is funny. <laughs> um, she's got a, a very, uh, she has a sparkle in her eyes. Um, and, uh, she's got this juice, I like to call it, about her of a lifted spirit where nothing but energy flows out of her. And, uh, when she gets to going, it's, it's this laughter that just, just comes through her without her trying to even be funny. So uh, she was a joy to work with, and uh, um, I love her uh, commitment level to uh, deliver um, her character as well. And then um, Brenda Smith DeBone, uh, first time working with her as well. Um, she had reached out to me on several occasions about working on a project together. So um, this one, I just really just wanted to take a try with her, and I'm so glad I did. Um, she was hilariously funny. But at the same time, she was able to snap from one point to the next to raise it to the next level in her communication as her character playing Ivory. Her playing Ivory was so perfect. Um, and she invested her heart into this character uh, through wardrobe, through style. I mean, she went beyond the look. Uh, that I was even looking for. All I said to her was, you know, I would really like for you to wear white because I want to do a wedding and I've always wanted to do a wedding in a film. And she's like, okay, I got you. I got you. And, and she had me. She showed up with, uh, this beautiful, uh, designer gown, uh, to, in white to wear for her wedding day. Um, she came with multiple, 
looks to choose from and she and and wardrobe and she was able to and this is what I love um that makes uh an actor magical to me is when they come with the expectation to deliver so much more than my expectation and my expectations I have to admit is rather high when it comes to actors <laughs> and she came with multiples uh outfits wardrobe wise um she put immediate thought into the wedding and how um, she could deliver that to make it a beautiful scene for me. And she did that. Um, she came with uh, different looks to alternate. So that way each scene was not, it had a continuity, but different looks to its continuity. And that that's that's really a blessing when you have a seasoned actor that's able to do that for you. Um, then you have Ron Godfrey. Now, it was my first time working with Ron, and he is really a good actor. He really wants to be good, so he's he's he takes the time to listen uh, when the director's trying to teach him, or train him, or walk him through whatever the line is, and being able to be teachable uh, from a woman director is really. A blessing in itself. Um, but what's special about Ron, uh, Godfrey as an actor is that, um, yeah, he has the heart for sure. No doubt about that. But he, he has expression, um, that's very difficult for some actors to be able to deliver on screen. Um, the expression in his, in his face um, when he's communicating, expression in his tone of voice when he's trying to deliver a line. That is something that is very gifted that some actors are able to tap into and some actors that, you know, they have to either train to. But Ron has that naturally. And so he was able to deliver that character by the elevation of his voice, um, the tone of his voice to the body language he wanted to give to the character. And so that was some of the things that I really loved about the actors that I worked with in Kitchen Talk. So with that, um, it just really delivered something really special uh, to the project itself. Um, it was a lot, it, it just turned out to be a lot of fun. Um, we had a uh, amazing cast um, in uh, Tanji and Anthony um, Davis and uh, Anita uh, Thomas who um, plays Aubrey, you know, she just came right in, tapped into that character, and she delivered. Even though it wasn't a very big character for her, a big role with a lot of lines, she took what part of that series, and, and she gave um, emotion to it. At the same time, she was able to bring the emotion with some good laughter, uh, with facial expression, and just just her delivery was just so amazing. And then, of course, you know, um, one of the actors I've always loved working with, um, Don Terrius Ruff. Uh, Don Terrius, uh, he and I have worked on several different projects, um, short films. Um, and uh, he's always been a uh, 100% kind of actor that, you know, he showed up for me and he delivered for me. And um, he, he was funny. He was really funny. I mean, <laughs> Don Terrius Ruff. Uh, is such a diverse actor, and he was just so funny to the point that uh, I was laughing behind the camera, and I had to, you know, kind of capture myself while we was, you know, doing the filming. So um, his his talent is amazing uh, in his diversity, and he's hilarious in his action, and he's such a humble spirit um, in the way he wants to be as an actor. Uh, in front of the camera, but also behind the camera. Uh, so he, he was definitely an honor to work with um, on that project and the uh, previous projects that we have worked together on. So I will be forever, forever grateful to him for what he had given me uh, out of his acting talent over the years that we were blessed to work together. And I just look forward to seeing him going further, doing greater things. And hopefully the opportunities will just pour 
where other projects and other directors will be able to see that talent in him. Um, so that's what Kitchen Talk. Um, basically, uh, Kitchen Talk is um, a, a, a comedy drama, and it's a story of love and family, um, family uh, reuniting after chaos and uh, struggle, and family being caring and supportive when things kind of take a wrong turn in somebody's life. And also, it's about forgiveness and being able to reconnect even in the chaos of trouble and being able to uh, become a un a, un a family of union where there's forgiveness, love, and making it happen as a family. It's really a challenge sometimes, but when you got love in that family, there's nothing you can't get over. So, but it takes everybody being open and willing to connect. Um, so that's Kitchen Talk, and uh, I'm so grateful that you guys um, tuned in over the Christmas uh, holiday to watch um, Kitchen Talk. We had a fabulous debut of this of the movie itself. And uh, so many of you watched, responded, uh, that you loved it, you enjoyed it, and the laughter was just so great. And I wanted to say personally, and I'm sure all the actors pretty much feel the same way, thank you for tuning in on Kitchen Talk. Okay, now our next project uh, that we worked on this year is Gavin Hook the series. Now, Gavin Hook is actually my very first series that I did. And uh, it, it started off with many, many challenges. Um, but it turned out to be so much edgier and better than I expected. Now, with Gavin Hook, um, it just beat me up. I'm going to be honest and tell you. Uh, it beat me up because there was just so many transitions to the, the the series itself. We we you know we constantly went through three years of recasting and recasting and recasting to the point that we end up recasting. I think with Gavin Hook, oh my goodness, I think there's only two characters in Gavin Hook that began at the very beginning. And with those two, I'll start out with them. And one of them I'm going to tell you is one of my most honorable, favorite actors to work with. And that is uh, Walter Duckworth. And Walter actually started with me when I very, when I began, this is the words I'm trying to say. Um, he was with me on my very first film called Rough Patch Twisted Fate. And I've always wanted to work with him again. Um, he's just, he's an honorable man. He's an honorable actor. His work ethic is strong like mine's. Um, his commitment level. And all he wants to do is just deliver. And for that, I love about him. So whenever I can cast him in any project, I reach out to him and like, hey, this is what we got. What do you feel? Is this something that you want to do? And he's, he says yes. And I am grateful to Walter for that. Now, Walter's kind of like my Mel Gibson kind of actor. That's what I call Walter. Um, cause he has kind of this look like Mel Gibson. <laughs> but, uh, Walter, he delivers his lines beautifully. Uh, he thinks he's so articulate to his character that he just he portrays. And he thinks in depth about the character, no matter how small it is or how big. He thinks in depth about that character. He thinks about how he's going to deliver it. He thinks about what that character means and then how that character is to be relatable to all the other characters within the project, not just his own. He don't think about just his own role. And that's what I love about Walter. And um, he has so much 
other projects out there that are far bigger than what I do, but he always makes time for Tone. And no matter how long it takes for me to get that project together to bring him on set, he never lets me down. He works out his calendar schedule to try to be available when I am ready to film, even if I cast him years before. And on, on, on Rough Patch Twisted Fate, he waited a little bit over a year just to be on set to film. And then we filmed it for over two years just to get it completed. Then when I called him back almost five years later, same personality, same kindness, same heart. He was flexible to with the schedule. I cast him. He waited the, the cut, the three years to just to start filming. And then when I said, this is when we were filming, there he was ready to show up. And, and that's what I love about Walter. And then when he showed up, he came to work. No time for play. I mean, he's got the personality where he mixes and mingles well, but he knows what he's there to do. And this is what I love about Walter. And I will always look for an opportunity to work with him. <laughs> the new actors that God sent my way to film with. Wow. What can I tell you? Um, Man, I don't even know where to start. I have to wait and save Gavin Hook for last. So sorry. So... We're going to start with um, my buddy. Oh, yes, my buddy, Olevin Jackson. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me correct that. Olevon Jackson. And he actually joined uh, Gavin Hook's series. And he, he started out with one row title. And then when we had to recast... He he sent me a, a message and said, would you consider me for that uh, the recasting of this character? And I looked at it, I thought about it, and I was like, well, why not? So I know he's a good performer, so I knew he'll deliver. So I was like, well, why not? So um, he became um, Ridley, and oh my goodness, did he become Ridley. He took that character so serious, I tell you. Oh, Levon is like a fun actor to, to film with, to work with. His heart is so pure, so beautiful, so kind. And he, he has a servant heart at the same time of trying to be the performer that he is. Um, on the set, he would come and carry the camera, set up the camera, set up the lights, set up the atmosphere, whatever I had need of. That's what he came and done for me to try to make the production run as smooth as he possibly could for me. And that just really blessed my heart when you got the actor not just coming with the ego of, I have arrived, I'm the actor, but humbled with the generosity of his spirit to help in any way. And that's uh, Olivon Jackson. And he plays Ridley. And um, he is basically a um, gang member headshot. And, uh, oh boy, him with that cigar... Him with that lovely raspberry voice he has. He's just magical on the screen. And uh, for Gavin Hook, I tell you, I can't wait for you to see this series. Um, I feel very, very good and very proud of this series, seeing that it's my very first. And all the uh, scenes being carried out with the actors giving so much love to their characters, uh, to the characters that they in interact with. It was just amazing. And... Um, uh, yeah, proud of, proud of old Levon Jackson, I am. Um, and then we have another newcomer, um, that I love worked, working with, and that is Charles D. He is magnificent. He is so awesome, um, in his delivery, and he is a SAG actor. He's worked on Empire. He's worked on, uh, uh, 
the rhinestone gems the uh, rhinestone gemstone on hbo um uh, the movie harriet i mean he's got a variety of films that he's done and uh he gave his time and energy to play the role of Bishop Trinity. And I mean, he gave Bishop Trinity a run for his money. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love me some Bishop Trinity. Now, I actually did not have Bishop Trinity in the script of the series for Gavin Hook. So, uh, when I, uh, was introduced, uh, to have, uh, to be considering, uh, Charles for this, uh, to work with. I asked him, I said, what role, ideal role you would like to play? So I took some of the things that he described as a character he's like to play. And that's how I put Bishop Trinity together. And I called him up and I'm like, if you're willing to, to play this role, I will write him out. And he was like, oh, of course I will. So I put Bishop Trinity together and whew, did he deliver. Charles is so fabulous. And um, um, his heart is so beautiful. He's so kind. And um, he's just like this big, big, big teddy bear. You just want to hug and squeeze all the time. <laughs> But uh, I love me some Charles D. Clark. He is just wonderful, magnificent, and talented. And uh, it was so fun. One of the favorite scenes that I have directing him um, is a scene that made him actually uncomfortable. And I'm sorry, I did. I got a kick out of making him uncomfortable because I wanted to push him. Because what I see in Charles D. Clark is... A magnificent talent that's above what he's delivered in other projects. And I wanted to uh, give him something that will push him harder to do more than what he's normally doing. Um, and he let me. And so we have this scene where um, he's in an argument with a woman that he's in love with, which is Sugar. We'll talk about Sugar a little bit later. But... Um, so I uh, climbed up on the bed, I stood in front of him, and then I put the camera directly in his face, and I pushed him, and he let me, and he delivered, and I was like, it was so, it was just so adorable for me, because I, I was able to really see that side I was trying to get through to him, and I was like, I ain't scared of you, Charles D. Clark. <laughs> And he was like, oh, you want this? Okay, I'm going to deliver this. And then he came at it. I can't wait for you guys to see this full scene. It was beautiful. Just magnificently done. Um, then there's also another scene that um, he delivered um, uh, it was where he was struggling because he's a he's a bishop, so he had he he's trying to be a strong minister, uh, man of ministry, and get away from his past. But he's being uh, encouraged to go back to his old ways. So he's kind of you know uh, battle, battling between the world he was he comes from to the world he wants to be in for God. And it was this drinking scene and the struggle in this drinking scene and how he shook his hand and the expression he gave in his face and and then getting that camera right up in his face. And he wasn't intimidated by the camera at all. And yeah, I love me some Charles D. Clark. <laughs> so um, I just want to say I'm, I'm grateful that... Um, I had the opportunity to meet him, to work with him, and for him to play this role in Gavin Hook as Bishop Trinity. Okay, so um, then we have uh, My Sugar, which is Genesis Omega. Um, Genesis Omega, she's been with me also since uh, Rough Patch Twisted Fate. And I've been trying to work with her again, but um, we have this relationship where I'm very mindful, very careful on the character roles that I uh, write to keep her in mind for. And uh, sorry, the uh, the call came in while I was 
um, talking. But anyway, so Genesis Omega, we have been working together for a lot of years. Uh, we worked, uh, we worked on Rough Patch to Stay Fate, and I've been wanting to work with her, but right after we finished filming that movie, um, she relocated, and, um, the budget just wasn't there to bring her in. But this time, I made sure there was a budget in place to bring her in so that we could work together. And, uh, so she came in to play the role of Sugar. Well, actually, she was going to be a doctor, uh, at first, but then I decided, no, we need to, br- we need to up this Annie on this character here. So we made her sugar a detective and she's, uh, man, she is so delicious. That's what I call my sugar, Genesis Omega. She's just pure delicious and she's able to bring, uh, the character to life with her style of acting. Uh, showing not only her beauty, but she can get down to business and be serious at the same time. So, uh, we have a, a, a great relationship on set, but we also have a great friendship off set where she's been, uh, just over the years, just this sounding board, this great supporter for me. And, uh, I really do appreciate that she came in to do this project with me and, um, she did me good. <laughs> okay, so um, the continuation of characters. Let me see for you. Now, this character, well, not character. I'm sorry. I said character. I, that's because she's got me thinking about her character. But this actress, um, her name is Sheena Addison. First time working with her. And Sheena Addison, I'm going to tell you right now, she is really spectacular. Um, she... Man, you talking about somebody investing in their character. We're talking what she got out of the role itself, uh, playing Sydney and Black Shadow, two different characters, sometimes in the same, well, every time in the same day. In the morning, she may start out as being Black Shadow. In the afternoon, she might end up being uh, Sydney, and then by the evening, she's back to Black Shadow. But I'm going to tell you this. She flipped that script, switched that script, that character with, with that camera every time. Um, that's when I say she is spectacular because it didn't matter what scene she was filming with. All I had to do was tell her it's Black Shadow or it's Sydney. And we even had one scene. Oh, my goodness. Boy, did she deliver. We even had one, one scene for her, for Sheena where um, she starts off as Black Shadow. And then as she progressed through the scene, she flips back and forth from Black Shadow to Sydney. And I'm telling you, ooh-wee, when you watch this series, man, I'm telling you, Gavin Hook, these, these actors, they flowed. They flowed. They flowed. They flowed in the characters they played. They flowed in relationship to each other's character to deliver and help each other pull from each other how to make the scene better. Just lovely. So she did that. Um, what I love about Sheena Addison is she has more than heart. Um, she has more than heart. She is, I'm like, I can't even describe, um, Sheena Addison. That's, that's how good she is. Um, like I said, you know, she went from A and then she would take it and jump right to Z. Um, I know I drained her. I know I pulled on her. And, you know, she, I love me some Sheena Addison. I'm sorry. I just have to put that out there because she really gave me a, my imagination of what Black Shadow and Sydney was all about. And her transition, her transformation all coincide to really make this character work. She invested in her wardrobe. We had wardrobe pieces for her, but she took it a step, uh, a step 
Heck, let me just say it this way. She took Black Shadow to the next level. <laughs> you know, the, the, the boots, the, the hair, the, the mask, the, the expression. Okay, I'm getting excited. Let me calm down. Cause, I mean, just filming her as a filmmaker, she is a filmmaker's dream. And I was so excited working with her. But going back and watching the edits, um, of the scenes, beautiful just i mean beautiful just beautiful i cannot wait for this project to be completed because with the actors that god has moved my path to f work on this project made gavin hook better than what i even thought it could be even in my writing the the character the actors that brought in these characters made it edgier uh, made it intense, made it, oh, uh, it's just on fire. Um, speaking of fire, <laughs> Kimberly Newsom. Oh, she was, here's the funny part about Kimberly. She was the last minute, two days before we were supposed to be filming because the actor, actress, I'm sorry, that was supposed to uh, play um, Tuesday Novak. Um, was not able to make it. So, you know, Kim and I had just kind of, you know, text back and forth here and there, um, where she was like, you know, if she get the opportunity, she would love to work with me. So I thought, well, here's an opportunity. You know, I like her style. I like her, her, uh, her persona. I like, uh, her, her, her personality, um, and who she presents herself. Um, on the social networks because I'm, I'm on, uh, her Instagram as well as her, uh, Facebook page. So, um, one of the things I do when I am interested in an actor or actress, I go and look what they post on their page, what their look is, what their personality is, you know, what their ethics are because, you know, I'm really, I'm particular on who I work with because I want to work with actors that I know with all my heart that we're going to get a project done together, you know? So when I have to recast, um, it's disappointing. I, I'm not going to front you and be like, oh, I just recast. No, it hurts. It hurts my heart. It hurts my, my thought process. It hurts me emotionally. Um, when an actor flips the script and changes on me, quit, um, or they just won't do the project, or even if they come to project, and they don't do well um, on their own merit by, you know, I'm just here and I'm just going to throw the lines out and I'm not going to give nothing to the character to make it feel authentic or real. Yes, I get some of those type of actors. Um, and um, so when I get actors and actresses that love what they do, and that's what my audition process is about. My audition, I don't, you know, yes, I want you to be a good actor. No doubt. But what I want you to be more than anything is a good person, a person that cares about your career as an actor, but a person that cares about your projects that you're involved in and care about me, the filmmaker, the writer, the director, because I'm investing a lot of time, mental, emotional energy and money. Uh, yeah, I get money outsourced, but I also put my own money in. Because I try to at least make it a project that an actor can be proud of. But sometimes, no matter what my effort is, you get actors that don't support or respect what I just said. <laughs> but anyway, but then you also have actors that have just situations in life where they just can't follow through the way they want to. But their heart is in the right place. So if I can discover that in the actor, that their heart's in the right place and it just didn't work out, no problem. But if you're just an actor with just ego and status quo, I just can't do you. We don't fit. Because if I ain't going to have the ego, I'm not going to let you come in with an ego. We just don't fit. And I'm okay with that. But back to the subject of Kimberly. Kimberly. Newson. Well, I was like, Kim, 
I have this character. Gave her the details of the characters. Do you think you could deliver that? And she's like, oh, yeah, sure. So she rearranged and changed her schedule to be present to film the character of Tuesday Novak. Man, she brought sexy. She brought the delivery of this character. She heightened this character to the point that she made uh, her co-actors uh, <laughs> kind of lose their mind sometime. But anyway, uh, that's another story to be told. But anyway, but th she really did. She brought out the best in, in the performance for herself, but she brought out the best in the performance of those that she's working with. And um, I'm just so grateful because, you know, sometimes we get caught up and emotional about the change in a script, the change in the cast. And and sometimes you want to put a project on hold because all these changes, all these rewrites. But, you know, I have come to learn because I've never had a project where a cast did not have to be recast. An actor did not give me a hard time. It is what it is, you know, but I deal with so many actors. You can't expect me to always get a hit and run. But when I get a hit and run, Lord Jesus, oh, I'm ready to shout up up and through here. It is awesome. So anyway, um, man, I apologize for this video being long, but it is just so important to share what the truth is behind this project and these actors and the characters. So Tuesday Novak. She came in, I'm sorry, I said Tuesday Novak. Um, Kimberly Newson came in as Tuesday Novak and she killed it. She brought all the sexiness. She brought in all the integrity. She brought in the work ethics and she delivered and she made those scenes so beautiful and strong. She is definitely a strong actress. And uh, I look forward to actually work with her on a couple of projects that I have in mind going forward because that's how much she delivered. And I respect her talent that uh, I'll jump at a chance to work with her again. Okay, so now um, the other guest, uh, I'm a guest, <laughs> actor that I want to uh, bring about who was also uh, cast at the very beginning, who hung in there with me. Um, and, and came up and showed up and stayed an extra day for me because we wanted to, you know, film some extra scenes and we weren't able to finish some of the scenes in the time frame because it got kind of late. And he agreed to stay just so we could deliver his scenes. And it, and, and it was just Don Carlos Cheryl. Mm, mm, mm. He plays uh, Gavin Hook's d dad, Bentley, and I worked with him also in Rough Patch, Twisted Fate, and unfortunately, um, we had to cut the scenes he did. Not that he wasn't good, it's just the scenes didn't... Um, wasn't unnecessary and just sometimes when you you know get in the editing process the story flows sometimes the scenes has to be cut out but uh but he has hung in with me as a friend a supporter but also as an actor and he came in and he delivered and he he was a father yes he was a, he was a true father and he <laughs> And he's so easy to direct. He listens to me and he's, he's able to adjust. Even if it's like a smidget, I ask, he's like, okay, Tone, just give me an idea what you want. And then he just does it. And I love me some Don and I really appreciate working with him and him sticking out, sticking it out with him to, uh, work on this Gavin Hook series with me. Oh, man, please, I don't want to forget nobody. Oh, yes, here we go. We have, um, he play, he came in really just to deliver an actor, but we end up casting Lamans, Lamans, Lamans. Okay, so now let's talk about, uh, Lamans uh, Bryant. Now, Lamans Bryant actually was supposed to just bring, uh, uh, Sheena 
to the set, but I learned he was an actor, and I just said, you know what, if you're willing, I have a character that I would uh, put you in, and let me tell you, so he came in, and he plays uh, uh, Devin, but we decided to combine his character into one uh, as Devin slash Keats. Man, he was so awesome and so flexible, and he delivered. He did good, and uh, just him and Sheena, they are such a perfect team working together um, as actors, and oh, yeah, they are just really pretty amazing. Man, I can't tell you how amazing uh, this cast of actors have been, and I absolutely love and adore each one of the actors for being such kind blessings to be a part of this, to allow me to um, share this project with the world through them. And, uh, wow, okay, so... I'm uh, trying to make sure I don't miss anybody. And if I did, I'm sorry. Um, but this is getting a little long and I just have to get through. So let me just tell you about Gavin Hook, who is played by Duran Rowan. And I'm telling you, he is so sharp. He is so mm, magnificent. Was it magnificent? <laughs> Anyway, I just have to tell you, Deron Rowan came in from Kentucky, and Louisville, Kentucky, that is, <laughs> Cardinals, <laughs> but anyway, um, he came in and uh, he uh, jumped right into the character of Gavin Hook like you wouldn't believe. Woo-wee! I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, just wonderful, just lovely, just beautiful. And uh, he really did it. I felt something special in him when we talked, when I uh, auditioned him, um, and then when um, he accepted the role. And then he came in and he, um, he took it so serious. He was so committed to Gavin Hook. I mean, oh boy, just wonderful to the talent he gave to Gavin Hook. <laughs> I mean, man, I almost canned Gavin Hook because I wrote it for another actor. Yeah, I did. And that actors decided to quit um, at the last minute. And uh, I'm telling you, um, Gavin Hook got hit with a lot. Um, Gavin got uh, Gavin Hook, the series, got hit with, we had location. And at the very last minute, um, the location uh, got taken away. So we had to find an entirely new location, which turned out to be pretty good. Yeah, we really loved it. And then um, the cast just got changed. And usually you have the cats changed, but never, well, no, I won't say never because it has happened before. The lead actor quits. <laughs> Look, wait a minute. The lead actor uh, to whom you wrote the, wrote the script for. Um, but anyway, it's all good. Um, um, Gavin Hook is going to be so good. And I am just praying in my heart that you will enjoy it. I'm 